Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Faith, Full Gospel Baptist Church, for our worship hour. This is a special service today. We're going to have prayer and inner healing service this morning. We welcome you. We encourage you to call friends and neighbors, wake up the family, share this broadcast. If you're on Facebook Live, share and tag some people and let them know that we're going to have a special service this morning and that you will be blessed. If you join us this morning, we'll open as always with a hymn and scripture, a few announcements, and then I'm going to get out of the way and let you hear from Pastor Moore. I'm Elder Renee Moore, and we welcome you again to Living Faith, Full Gospel Baptist Church. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus saith the lord jesus jesus how i trust him how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him precious jesus savior friend and i know that thou art with me and will be with me to the end jesus Jesus, how I trust thee, how I proved thee o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you more hallelujah if we could just trust in him yes lord our scriptures this morning there's two of them our scriptures this morning are coming from the book of psalms number 46 verses 1 in the beginning of verse 2 psalm 46 and 1 and then john the gospel of john chapter 16 verse 33 psalm 46 1 john 16 and 33 and the scripture reads god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear and jesus said these things i have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The word of the Lord is blessed. Let's pray together, church. Father, we come this morning with grateful hearts, thankful hearts, we come adoring you, Lord, and loving you and worshiping you, for you alone are worthy of worship and praise. We say hallelujah to your name, God, for you are God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are, for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, for your precious gifts of salvation and redemption and mercy and grace and truth. We thank you for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for the empty tomb. We thank you for the Holy Spirit whom you have sent to comfort and to keep us until you come again for us. 
We thank you, Lord, for our church, for all our church members, for all the families that are represented. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our faithful members, our elders, our mothers, our deacons. We thank you for all of those who have given of their time and their treasures and their energies to the work of the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for our friends, our Christian friends, our fellow pastors and churches all around this city, this country, who at this moment are sharing your word with a desperate world. And we thank you most of all, Lord, that you have not left us in darkness, but you have given us the light of the gospel. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this service. We ask you to guide us, keep us, show us, present yourself, manifest yourself. We yield to your spirit and to your word. In all things, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. Good morning again, living faith. Did you miss us? We were off last week. We're back with a special service for you this morning. Just a few announcements, and then we're going to hear from the pastor. Bible study, regular Bible study for Living Faith now is every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. If you'd like to join us for Bible study, just contact me. I'll make sure you get the Zoom link. We're doing some very interesting things in Bible study. It's very informal. You can come, ask your questions, get your questions answered. So join us for Bible study. The southern region of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Conference, International, I'm sorry, is having its regional summit this month. It'll be a virtual summit. Our southern region includes Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. And it'll be a virtual summit this year on April the 29th and 30th at 7 p.m. each night. The services will be broadcast on the southern region's Facebook page. If you can't find that, let me know. I'll be glad to send you a link and share it with you. Today... Our state bishop, Bishop Bobby L. McCarter, and his wife, the lovely Lady Julia McCarter, are celebrating 40 years of ministry, uh, pastoring, I'm sorry, 40 years of pastoring at a charity uh, church there in, uh, where am I at? Crawford, Crawford, Mississippi. I was about to put him in Columbus. He's in Crawford, Mississippi. 48 years in ministry. We wish them much congratulations. We love Bishop and Lady McCarter. They've been very kind to us good friends to us, and uh, we wish them all the best on this glorious anniversary. End of the school year is near, children. All my young people, get excited. It's been a rough school year for some of you all, but the end is near, and we've got a couple of announcements coming up at the end of the school year. We have, as far as we know, one senior graduating this year from from our church, that's Jacarius Randall, will be a graduating senior. At least that's what we're all assuming. J.K., are you listening? Uh, That he'll be a graduating senior and we'll be celebrating with him. For the rest of you who are in school, Pastor has uh, decided that for all of the children who do well and finish the school year well, he's going to take you all on a trip to the Memphis Zoo. You have to wear your mask and all that stuff. You will have to wear masks and there are rules involved, but it's a trip to the zoo. For finishing school well, so we'll, you'll hear more about that soon. He's he's promised to do that for the children. So you all get ready, get ready, finish strong, get your lessons out. I know it's been a hard year. It's been hard on teachers. It's been hard on students. We've been praying for y'all, and you know we're here to help you if you ever need help with your schoolwork. But we by the end of the school year, we're all going to be needing to celebrate. So we're going to take a little trip to the zoo. And finally, the service today is a very special service. And we would appreciate it at the end of the service after you've uh, listened and watched. And remember, this is on Facebook, so you can go back and listen to it again. We're also, it'll also be saved on our YouTube page. You can watch it again. When the service is over, we'd appreciate you contacting us and let us know if you've been blessed by the service and helped by it in particular um, today. So with no further ado, here's Pastor Moore. To my brothers and sisters in Christ and and all God's cheering, good morning. Welcome to Living Faith Wish uh, Hour. I'm Pastor Clearance Moore. Uh, I want you to say with me, I am encouraged. The Lord will hear my call. 
I am encouraged. Now, a call is a cry made as a sermon, you know, someone summoning someone or to attract someone's attention. The blessed thing is, is that God is always on his job. But nevertheless, we give him the honor by letting him know that we need him. I want all my prayer warriors today to join in this morning. I want you to say amen. amen. And everybody else, I want you to say praise God. Amen. And if you will, turn with me to Psalm 121. Psalm 121. As we say, this is a special inner healing uh, service. It's for both healing and encouragement. Psalm 121 said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, and I'm reading an Amplified, which have in the bracket of Jerusalem. From where shall, from where shall my help come? My help come from the Lord, who made the heavens and made the heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keep Israel will neither slumber brief, briefly or nor sleep soundly. That's the Amplifier. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day. Not a moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guide, will guide you going out and you are coming in. And in everything that you do. And from that, this time forth and forever. Let us say amen to the reading of God's word. Special note. God always keeps his word. He doesn't do it in the manner in which we, uh, that the world do it, but he keeps his word. I was asked a question, uh, asked a question yesterday, what type of prayer? And I said, in a healing. And I do not want you to be, uh, uh, I want you to be aware of what it is that, that I'm asking you to do. Inner healing prayer. First of all, the key word here is inner. Inner. Inner healing prayer is a time of an interacting with the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit for wholeness and connection. Wholeness and connection. So, praying to God. Uh, through what we call the inner healing prayer, nothing new, is that we're not only praying for healing, but we're praying for to address other problems or other things in our life. And we also want those things that they are being answered be connected to Jesus Christ. So at this time, while we're going through this service today, I want you to remove any distraction. If you got you a cup of coffee, put it to the side and warm it up later. Cup of tea, or you got you a sandwich, eat afterward at this service today, okay? Uh, pay attention so you can hear God talk to you. In a healing prayer, recognize God as the counselor, healer, and is the change agent in our lives. He's the one who, who can help us to change. Inner healing prayer is a time also of reflection and an encouragement. Reflection and an encouragement. So let us together pray. Bow your head. Because of who you are, I give you glory this morning to him, the Father. I give you praise and I give you thanks. Lord, I find comfort knowing that whatever situation I find myself in, I am encouraged that you will come to my rescue, and I want to take this 
precious time to say thank you, Lord. Loving God, I pray that you will comfort me in my suffering and lend skills to the hands and minds of my healers and bless the means used for my cure. Give me overwhelming, well, uh, give me overwhelming uh, confidence in the power of your grace, your healing, touch, that even when I'm afraid, I may put my whole trust in you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us say amen. I marked out a few names, and I know I'm going to miss some. But they was on my mind. These are people that I've been in contact with, uh, either know about or been in contact this week. Special prayer and inner healing. Inner healing. Christine, I'm not going to call the last name Christine, Sister Buchanan, Sister uh, Ida, Sister Badu family, who, uh, uh, for as I know, four of them uh, caught the virus, and we're praying for them this morning. We're praying for the family that was on the ship and lost 12 family members. Uh, the, sh the ship capsized. In a thunderstorm. We're praying for the family, or the, praying for the family that lost the loved one, and and you know there's been so many shooting. But we're praying for all of them this morning too. Probably mentioned before uh, these uh, these names before the prayer, but God works according to His. Uh, uh, he works according to regardless. Then we had a lot of shooting here in the Cleveland and the Mississippi Delta area and throughout this state and around this country. We prayed for that this morning. We're going to pray for encouragement and knowing that God is on the throne. We pray for uh, Janita, who recently just uh, got out of the hospital. Uh, we're praying for Lil Bay and, and Brandy. I'm praying for my immediate family. And I'm praying, and we pray, we just prayed for all who are listening. Praying for a brother, I was told his name, but I forgot him. I forgot it, but he's uh, suffering with cancer. And then we're praying, we, done, we, we was praying for Sister Cletus and my sister-in-law. And then we also was praying for Sister Lady, uh, Lady uh Faith this morning, who suffer with back problems. As we were praying for all of these, I want, want to remind you what Philippians 4 and 13 say. I can do all things through Christ who screened me. So ask God for screen, whether it's a national situation or a local situation or a state situation. God can screen us and he can help us to get through this. I like this song that uh, Nicole Mullen was singing this morning. I just decided I would quote it when she said, When I call on Jesus, all things are possible. And I encourage you to say with me this morning, When I call on Jesus, all things are possible. And I want you to say again with me, I'm calling on you, Jesus. Call on you and nobody else. At any given time, you and I uh, know at least a handful of people, a handful of people who are battling an illness of some kind, or they, you know, illness don't necessarily have to be a physical one, it could be a mental one, or it can be a social one. They're battling loneliness, depression, some battling anger, abuse, we can just go on. Some battling this morning how to make ends meet. And then we are praying this, uh, we also uh, I want to encourage those who got cheering who making bad choices. And then we're praying what that one of those people that we we're praying for, and I hope that you were, could have been yourself. Because I was praying for myself. I have a, uh, a ailment and I pray daily for it. 
and thank God each time I see improvement. And now, and also this morning, we don't want to forget that there is a powerful, glo- uh, global, worldwide pandemic. Three, me, three million people have died worldwide from the virus. And we are facing the, uh, greater fears over the mere possibility of a sickness. And what I mean by that, even if we just have a headache, we don't know if it's the virus or something else. We can have a scratchy throat this morning. You, we, 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 I want you to be encouraged this morning. And, you know, and we, we, and we don't know because of the virus. It's an invisible uh, uh, disease, but yet it makes it present, uh, makes it present known to everybody. We're facing greater fear of the mere possibility of, as I said, illness, as well as the uh, uh, as well as the realistic impact this could have on those with pre-existing medical condition. You could have uh, diabetes. You could have other uh, illness and the COVID, and just it may not even be COVID, but we we'll, but uh, you. Kind of down in the dumps because of the fact that uh, uh, I uh, I got a relative who is uh, he have to take dialysis three times uh, uh, a week. I'm praying that he be encouraged. He's on the uh, donors list for a kidney, but we know there are so many on there. That might take a time, then, but, but be encouraged. Pray to God. It may happen tomorrow. No matter what the specific circumstances, the, uh, the customary plea, prayer, and hope is for healing for self and for others. And one resource uh, that can may bring peace and comfort during these trying times is the Bible, y'all. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's roughing for healing. Healing is all the way from the, I looked it up, and I was surprised, and, and we're not going into this morning, but healing started actually in the Garden of Eden. Look it up. Inner healing for that man or woman who need emotional uh, support. Inner peace to reduce their stress level. Because if you got a disease and you're under stress, stress will make that disease even worse. Stress by itself will kill you. Whether the ailment is physical Mentally, spiritual, or emotional, praying for healing as well uh, praying as well as to as strength to cope is a is a productive, common response. But know who to call, know who to ask for support, know who that know where your help gonna come. No, as we said the message this morning. Be encouraged. The Lord hears your cry. I hear your call. The problem this morning, brothers and sisters, and that's with all of us, is that we get impatient. We want it to have them right now. We read about the lady with the issue of blood. Jesus did heal her, but it did not happen overnight. She had had this ailment for a long time. The brother who was at the pool, he had his illness for a long time. Didn't nothing happen until he, until he rolled over into the pool. I want you to understand. The brother who was healed when they let him through the roof, but he had to make some effort. So this morning, your effort, we have, we're praying to you to be encouraged while you pray. And believe uh, to be encouraged also is to trust God. Trust God that he would do it. It may not come as the old people used to say. I love quoting old people. It may not come when you want him, but he right on time. Hearing Bible verses, which we're going to do this morning, have been providing comfort and guidance to readers for thousands of years. As they point to the one, uh, point to the one who has the power to ease burden. You might have gotten an argument with somebody this morning. Your relationship with your uh, with with with, uh, with someone that's in your life may not be uh, uh, may not be going good, but you got to know that Jesus has the power.
to ease burden. Uh, with anxiety, and I'll probably mention this again, remember, God sent the Prince of Peace. Huh? With anxiety increasing from the from facing the unknown in this uh, uh, virus uh, crisis, hardship being experienced from managing symptoms of underlying health concern. People finding out that they're having health problems that they didn't know that they had. A uh, uh, one who have had a health problem and recently it, uh, due to whatever reason it then started again. Mm -hmm. Doubt and frustration bubbling up from the rising number of cases and death every day. As I said, at 300, I mean, is I right? Yeah, 3 million, almost 3 million then died. Worldwide. Doubt, frustration bubbling up from a number of cases and death each day. And very possible, including our loved ones. When I talk to people, I'm constantly asking them, how your family? How you checked on your family? Well, we don't know. I was sitting, uh, getting ready for this and trying to encourage you. Is uh, I was talking to someone yesterday and, and told them about, uh, just, just found out about a dear friend of mine that passed. But I told uh, this person, that I uh, I feel fine and talk to a family member they feel fine and the reason we feel fine about it is because this person was a Christian who believed in the Christian belief a person who did everything they possibly could as a Christian and tried to live her life as a lady and when she died uh, people would the thing that they rejoice about is the many accomplishment that she, through Jesus Christ, that she had accomplished. That's the kind of testimony, that's the kind of obituary you, uh, you and I want to have. So I'm encouraging you this morning. Do good. And paying for sufferings that been dealt with on a regular basis. Bible verses about healing, and Bible verses about encouragement, and Bible verses about faith may, I want you to know, will bring sustaining peace within these challenging situations. They will. And whenever, whatever you are crying up against, we hope that when you read your script and the ones that we're going to few that we go over, and I advise you to go to your Bible, healing scriptures, encouragement scriptures, and prayer will help give you relief and renewal and alleviate some of the tension that comes from handling an extremely uh, difficult situ situation in your life. Especially those taxing seasons of life when there seem to be more questions than answers. And this in particular to our young people. Yes, there will be a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But there are answers for them. But while you're searching for the answer, do not make unwise choices. Because if you make unwise choices, you never will get you never will get an answer to your question. Because you might not be around. So look to Jesus and ask him for an answer. And children, go to your parents. There's a scripture that tells all children, honor their father and their mother. Honor their father and their mother. There's a reason for that. If you don't have a father or mother in your life, go to grandmama or the person that, uh, that is raising you or done raise you. Their answers. God will give them an answer to give to you because they're older than you. They've been around longer than you and God gave them, have given them the wisdom as to how uh, 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 to be where they're at now. And whether you're looking for the best uh, verses about encouragement or healing, they're all good. So this morning I picked just a few. God give us his word to provide courage, peace, and hope when we need it the most. You're not alone in facing hardships. Uh, this is a personal testimony. 
and I'm doing much better. There have been many mornings when I, my legs felt like two by four, and the bottom of it felt like I was walking on a sponge. They call it neuropathy, and the other part is arthritis. But you know what? I stand there and tell God, help me move one leg at a time. And each and every time, the more that I walk, they call it warming. Each time I walk, I can, the next step is better than, than the last one. And God's word provides courage about this, about this hardship. We all face time when we doubt God's goodness and plan, but we need to be encouraged. They're, they're talking about all the problems in, the, in this country. Well, it's based on the virus. No, what it is is that we, uh, a lot of us have lost hope. We've been locked up in these houses for over a year. Uh, when we go around people, we're nervous. We're even nervous around our own kin people. We're nervous that, uh, uh, I know for a while, I didn't want to be uh, uh, around. I got a, uh, a new uh well, she knew in this family, uh, seven, almost eight month old of our great grandbaby. And uh, didn't want to go around her because I didn't know I might have been carrying the virus, you know, because I don't believe in that junk. Talking about, well, it ain't going to hurt no cheering. No. No. But then, praise God, I got both of the vaccines. And even now, I still wear a mask. I still wash my hands. And I still social dis distance other than my, my wife. I have been blessed to be around my family and we all done had our, either done had both of the shots or one shot, but we still mask, we still are social distant, we still wash our hands and we still take precaution. We don't hang around each other all the time, but nevertheless, see God, that's part of God encouragement plan. Mm -hmm. See, when we doubt God goodness and plan, we need to be encouraged. And don't give up. Meditate on what I'm about to say on these Bible verses and remember them. And I probably while you're going to be praying along with you, if we was in the church, we'd be praying, they would be praying right with you. Uh, and I'm hoping that they're doing so now. And remember them throughout the day. I'm talking about the scripture. Throughout the day and stay inspired and stay motivated. And I was talking to someone, they were talking about the virus and whatever, and I sent word to them, stop being mean spirit. Don't stop being mean spirit. Let someone tell you, talk to you, and you get the help you need. But I understood their circumstances. So I so I said, okay, I understand it. But in the meantime, the one thing that you can do is you can read your scriptures on healing. You can, uh, I was talking to one baby and she told me, say, uh, they wanted to put me in the hospital, but I decided that I would just rely on my, on my faith. But here what she did, see, God put stuff in for you. Told me the kind of juices that she was doing and the things that she was doing and how she isolated her family from her and how she quarantined herself. And, and as far as I know today, she's doing pretty good. See, God provided a plan. And he put it in your head. See, what it is, we think a lot of times that we're so smart that we thinking of, no, God is guiding you. The Holy Spirit teaches and the Holy Spirit comfort. Okay? No matter what you face now, Scripture can encourage you to cast your cares upon Jesus and trust in the Lord. No, I'm not talking about two different people. Jesus is Jesus, but He also is our Lord. He also is our Master. And here's what I want you to want. And the following verses was collected to uplift your spirit and point you towards God, our greatest encourager. I invite certain people to come and be on the broadcast this morning because I know if it ain't illness, it may be something else. Your career may not be going the way that it is. Uh, it could be a, a number of things in your life that could be going on. I want to 
them to come. I wanted them to listen this morning. I wanted you to be encouraged. Uh, one of the, uh, I know one of the uh, babies, I call them babies because they're younger than me. They cheering about to leave the nest and they, it, it disturbing. I understand. Nobody want their children to, to lead that nest because they don't know what direction they may fly in. But be encouraged. God, pray, pray, pray. Pray with that child and pray for that child and get that child to pray for themselves and let them jump out of that nest. It's not going to be, it's not easy. I want you to be encouraged. And I was looking this morning before, as we get ready, getting ready for the verses. And uh, in this morning that Got a little brother, um, uh, little Rummer. He done wrote a book. I want y'all to go on. Uh, I just seen it on Facebook. I don't hang out on Facebook. And I want him to be encouraged that this book going to be not just his first one. He going to be, he going to write some more. He going to do some great things. That's what we want to do. We want to encourage. So this is what this is all about. Encouraging you to be your best through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may your faith be renewed this morning. Because you may feel broken. And may your soul uh, uh, may your soul and your soul strengthen as you listen and read as we're getting ready to do these scriptures. Uh, and as you listen and read these and read these encouraging Bible verses and as many more, filled with hope with me. The first one I want to share with you this morning, and I want you to want uh, our uh, prayer warrior to lift his prayer up. I want you to lift the prayer up. I want you to say praise God. I got several of them, not that many. Second Timothy 1 and 7. Second Timothy 1, chapter 1 and 7. It says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. So when you're feeling weak, know that God will screen you. Love and self-discipline. Someone was telling me, or was talking to me about a situation. Said, you're going to fuss. No, I'm not going to fuss. No, I'm not going to fuss because you know better. That's all I had to say. God wants us to be self-disciplined. Do the right thing when you know to do the right thing. Don't do the wrong thing, then holler, uh-uh. It just don't work. John, John, 16, 16 chapter, 33rd verse say, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. So whatever going on internally, that's where your healing comes from, internally. So that in me, come on, in Jesus. In is a word you know from the dictionary. It mean it, it mean in me in. That means that you don't just completely wrap yourself around and wrap that word and wrap yourself around you. It, huh? He say, may have peace in this world. You will have trouble. So you can just leave you, uh, uh, you know, God, we ain't teaching that we ain't going to have no trouble. You're going to have trouble. But here's what, here's what the scriptures say. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Now what we need to do is find out, well, how did he overcome the world? I see so much. I'm seeing people getting, innocent people getting shot by the police and blah, you know, etc., etc. Well, he have overcome the world. We need to examine that. We don't have time this morning. John 14, 27 said, Peace I leave with you. 14, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. See, God don't do things the way you do it. The world needed peace. The world needed a broker. Needed someone on our behalf. So he sent his son. Huh? We, we, 
we're going to call him this morning. He has many talents. We're going to call him sent the Prince of Peace. But the Prince of Peace came as a baby to the world. And even then there was trouble. You remember that the mama had to escape along with Joseph. Daddy. To from one place to the next. But nevertheless he sent him. For you and I. Say with me this morning live in faith. Because this is one of our founding scriptures. Psalm 27 and 1. is my light and my whom and then I put or what shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold stronghold is the definition for around the uh, when the when, uh, the forts in the medieval time in particular and during the uh, uh, colonial day they would build forts but they always built an outer perimeter and that was the stronghold to either stop you or slow uh, the enemy from uh, getting inside but the scripture said the Lord is my light and scribe uh, salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid? It didn't tell you to go out and make no wrong choices. It didn't tell you to do things that is unrighteous. It didn't tell you the thing that, get, that, that is unholy. A lot of times, you know, I said to say, yeah, I've been guilty of it. That we do things, do things, well, Lord going to take care of me. Yes, he will. But you're gonna, but you're gonna see a rouse snake and you're gonna grab him, and you don't know nothing about snakes, and then you, then you upset with God because the rouse snake bit you. You shouldn't have picked him up in the first place. Let him go on where he was going, and you went on your way. Thessalonians third chapter thirteen verse says, "May he screen your heart so that you would be blameless and holy in the, in in his presence." I mean, in the presence of our God and Father, when our Lord comes with all the, listen to this, is very key. When our Lord comes with all His holy ones. You know what? Don't know. Look either in 1st or 2nd Thessalonians 3 13, 3rd chapter, 13 verse. Sorry about that. In the last verse for the day. But you, those of you who are healing, those of you who are recovering, those of you who are struggling in whatever situation, whatever situation, trying to make choices, trying to make the right choices in your life. And you need, that means you need some healing. That means if, you, if you're trying to make choices, that means you have an internal problem. If you're ill, Still an internal problem. James 5, the 5th chapter, 14 and the 15th verse. He say, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elder of the church to pray over and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Here's a note. If you sit next to somebody right now, this morning, and you want to be healed of whatever it is, and you want to be encouraged, you and that person lay hands on each other's shoulder and say this prayer with me right quick lord if you heal me i will be 
heal. Lord, I need to be encouraged. And if you can encourage me, I will be encouraged. I may be, my spirit may be low. Lift it up through you. And dear Lord, I will search your word so that I can be a better person. Where I can, where I can, when the attack of the devil come, I can hold him off, dear Lord. Because I know you got my back. Say that. And those of you who are sick, if someone doing that for you, it could be it can be one of your young children, it could be uh, one of your children. I promise you, you probably feel better right now. You relieved because you know somebody, because you know somebody, and then we talk about Jesus is there for you. Jeremiah thirty and seventeen. Closing scripture today says, and when we talk about help, we talk about the whole person. What I tell you, inner healing is all about. It's about wholeness. It's also about connection. It's about encouragement. It's about reflection. It's about, as Timothy say, self-examine. And you asking God to come and guide you, asking. The Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will teach you about whatever is going on with you this morning. Jeremiah 30 and 17 verse 8, But I will restore you to health. Health is another word for wholeness. It's not just, just simply disease. It's a takes in uh, health uh, uh, is a uh, health means your entire body. It doesn't mean just going to heal your arm and let your eye be sore. It doesn't mean that. It means the whole body. And here's another that the scriptures say, not only will I, this Jeremiah 30 and 17 says, but I will restore you to help and heal your wounds. And too many times I've had people who uh, are troubled because of the things that happen in their life and their past. Ask God to. Uh, if, if, if a memory come up, tell the devil to get away, tell the devil to leave you alone. And ask God to heal that memory if it's a bad memory. declares the Lord. Now I pray that this will help her to you this morning. I thank God for his words. I thank God for his word. And as I get ready to, uh, as I told somebody yesterday, tell y'all the same thing, I love you. That's one of my, uh, you know, I got a whole lot of them favorite babies. And I was telling them that I love them. And I do. Love all of y'all. There are some things that a preacher must do. They must have a, a, a pastor must have a caring heart. They must have the courage to tell you that what the word say, even if it don't, even if it disturbs you. And the third thing is to do, a pastor uh, always try to do what is best to guide the church that he passed in the right direction. Those are his responsibilities. Or her responsibilities. Can't get around it. Right now, Living Faith, we, I'm back over there at the uh, brick and mortar building. Doing some things, and I'll tell you all about it. Don't forget cheering. Study hard. If you want to see them baboon, gorilla, and hippo, parliaments, and elephants, and lions, and stuff with us, then you got to work hard. Work hard. So far, the reports I've been getting, uh, yeah, I've been spying on y'all cheering, is that so far the cheering you've been doing pretty good considering what you done had to go through this year. You had to deal with the virus. You had to deal with class on computer. Then you had to go back to class 
and then you know your activities we question now that they're gonna be you know some school I mean you know what events there are a lot of events that you can't attend and if you do you can't attend them in the normal way so there's been a lot of stress if you look on our website uh, for Living Faith uh, Baptist Church there's a hope in the Delta it will begin to, it will be coming up monthly and the purpose of it is in order to educate, edify, encourage, and equip the uh, saints of God. At some point, our Tree of Life Education Center will be on, will be off and thing. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm not in charge of him. Elder Moore is in charge of him. Maybe we'll be off in online Bible courses and, and other education services. Um, the Mercy League Association, uh, we uh, not only teach, train chaplains and, and uh, family uh, uh, mission workers. We uh, uh, this first uh, uh, the student that's in it now at some point we will be in that class and I look forward to you receiving your certification and your uh, and all that go with it. Hopefully in the future I can begin to uh, teach some begin again inner healing courses to, uh, to address everyday issues like women's issue, men's issue, children's issue, young adult issue, youths, and that includes everything, everything. And we address it from, from, the, from the standpoint of the Bible. That's all we can do. We have to go to the Word for everything. I don't care how much you learn in these schools. I've learned that the hard way. You can go through all these schools and you can get as many pieces of paper as you want. If you ain't got Jesus' word under your belt, then you don't have a proper education. So this morning I pray that you be encouraged, that you was encouraged. I pray that you feel better. And those of you who have, we invite you to come uh, and listen to us again as we try to do a better job at delivering God's word. And I thank Jesus for allowing me to be, be your servant. Let us all say, as I'm saying, y'all be blessed, be safe.